so here we are with the uh, brassicas that are planted in the spring and the summer. Um, I've had a bit of a mix up with them though because the ones that I uh, planted when I planted them in the greenhouse and put some labels in, the condensation has washed the labels clear. So I didn't really know what plants were what. So, but we have got some, we've got some, uh, some red uh, sprouts there, some normal coloured sprouts, these are. But most of it seems to be these big tall ones here, plants here, which is actually kale. And there's way too much of this, I've never eaten all of this. Oh, you know, it's going to come in useful because we've now got a few chickens on the, on the allotment. Um, so we can give these leaves to the chickens and they absolutely love it actually. So a few green leaves each day, so that they'll probably stop in most of the winter. Uh, we might eat a few in the house. But what I'm going to do today, because we've had such a little mix up, we aren't going to have the brassicas over winter that we'd hoped for. So I'm going to plant some more brassica plants now. We're in late September and even into October you can do that. So, you know, if you want this continuity or seasonality of, of your vegetables and you want something fresh to pull and harvest all through the winter, if you plant the right sorts of cabbage, broccoli and cauliflower, you will have a good chance, unless it's a really severe winter, of having um, greens fresh in the garden and the allotment to eat right through until the spring. So I'll uh, show you the land I've prepared and uh, we'll, we'll talk about planting the seeds, uh, the plants, should I say. So I'm right at the far end of the plot now where I had me uh, broad beans and peas. There's still a few peas left there, of the second crop, third crop peas. Um, but I've uh, dug that over and raked it quite rough this time, not too fine. And that's where I'm going to plant the uh, brassica plants that I've got. I've got some cabbages, some broccoli and some cauliflower. So they're going to go in there. Right, so here we are to plant the um, broccoli plants. Um, I've actually bought these. You can send for a mail order um, and they come, they'll come straight away now. I ordered these earlier and they'll come once they're ready. But if you order these, they're in within a few days. They come in these little packages. Um, when they first come, you simply put them into some water um, in case they've dried out a little bit. And then prepare your land and plant them outside. Um, just rake it over nicely. Use your dibbler. Nice dibbled hole. And then So there we are, that's a single plant, don't have to put it in too deep but you want the roots nicely buried, so then just put it into the hole, like that, bear me team. They're very delicate plants, um, I'm going to cover them with a, a net because pigeons and, and that will love them and you have to keep an eye out for slugs and snails on them so maybe put some uh, slug pellets around them, but remember to make sure they're not ones that are going to harm any pets that you have in the garden. You can get pet friendly slug pellets so if you're going to use them that's what you need to use. Um, and particularly if there's going to be any keen frost I would suggest they maybe need covering as well ready for frost just until they get established. They will stand some frost once they're growing away but uh, when the first young crop plants like this they need some help and some protection. So I'll plant the rest of these, give them plenty of space to grow over the winter. and they'll want a good watering in as well, once you've done them. So that's five plants of broccoli. I've got some uh, spring hero cabbage, some cauliflower and some frosty cabbage. So there we are, our cabbage, broccoli and cauliflower plants. But they need watering in, protecting with slug pellets, and then maybe a, a net cloche put it over to keep birds off. Now that we are into autumn, livestock farmers are preparing to fetch their cattle inside for the winter. This stops the field becoming muddy and the grass being damaged by the cattle's hooves. The straw bedding has come from rolling out the bales you saw being baled at harvest time. When outside, cattle usually just eat grass. To feed the cattle whilst they are inside over winter, the farmer will have harvested some grass. This grass must be preserved, 
or it would simply rot and be no use to feed the cattle. Grass is preserved either as hay or as silage. Hay is grass which has been dried out so it will keep. Hay is often confused with straw. Straw is what comes out of the back of a combine harvester when harvesting cereals. Making hay, the grass is first cut or mown and left to dry. The farmer may turn the grass several times to help with the drying. Once the grass is dry enough, the farmer will then bale it. It is baled into large or small bales of hay. It is important that the grass is dry enough when baled or the bales can heat up and actually catch fire. Silage is also made from mown grass. This time it is only left to dry for or wilt for a day or so. grass is then baled wrapped tightly in plastic this weather proofs the bale and also squeezes out most of the oxygen Silage for a clamp is picked up and blown into trailers by this machine, a forage harvester. This tractor is heaping the grass up and also squeezing out some of the oxygen. The grass, either in a clamp or bale, then ferments and becomes pickled by special bacteria which work best without oxygen. That was why the farmer had to remove much of the oxygen when heaping or baling the silage. Once the farmer has brought the cattle in, we will see them being fed the hay or silage, along with other ingredients to make sure they have a balanced diet. Schools on the Stockbridge Technology Schools program visit the site four times a year. Last spring they planted various crops, if you, if you feel it, the onion, like these onions. Now they are harvesting their crops. Onions. Sweet corn. Yeah, quite a few of 
Beetroot? Oh, that's nice. That's gorgeous. That's too big. That's well too big. And cats. Oh, yeah. These are killed around. It's a twisted carrot. They will take these home to enjoy as part of their five a day. Farmers are also harvesting these crops, but they are using big machines. Here's farmers harvesting beetroot. Here's how to enjoy beetroot. Boiled and then eaten warm. Lovely and sweet. Once harvested, carrots are usually washed and packed ready for you to eat. Carrots are nice cooked, but they are also a tasty snack chopped up and eaten raw. <laughs> 